Thanks everybody for dialing in. Um, this is our uh, essentially second quarter executive update on uh, distribution tens uh, as shown in the North America distribution tracker powered by GTDC. Um, I think we've got some interesting updates for you today. Uh, let me uh, introduce our speakers. So we have uh, Frank Vitagliano, the CEO of the GTDC with some um, some intro remarks. Uh, I'll follow with uh, the GTDC summary. And then we have uh, Lidice Fernandez, who's a GVP with our Worldwide Enterprise Infrastructure Trackers to talk us through some of the trends in uh, enterprise infrastructure. So uh, Frank, do you wanna? Yeah, thank you, Lauren. And welcome everybody uh, to our kind of quarterly update call. Uh, as many of you know, we started these uh, probably about a year ago or so, and um, we really want to ensure that everybody is on board with the activity, and certainly this time of the year, it's it's critical. Sure. Um, I just have two quick things that I want to kind of mention. The first is, um, you know, as you know, we have our annual GTDC event uh, for North America. Uh, we've got plenty of time. Uh, it's coming up February 7th through the 9th. Uh, It'll be in uh, California, again, so Southern California. So um, see if you could uh, get on our website, uh, you know, lock in the date, pencil it in your calendar, because we'd, we'd love to have you join us. Second thing that I want to just quickly mention is um, we continue to do uh, research and provide you with, you know, as much content and as much information as we possibly can. Uh, our latest report came out uh, here in the second quarter, it's out. And essentially it's an, an innovation enablement guide. And uh, if you think about everything that's going on in the marketplace and the constant um, you know, innovation that's happening in our space, um, somebody has to help uh, our uh, ecosystem enable uh, the, that technology in, in terms of getting it to market. And uh, distribution does that. And so this guide is pretty comprehensive. It'll take you through a number of different areas where distributors provide cost-effective uh, route for scaling uh, emerging technology. So I'd encourage you to get on our, um, our, our site and uh, uh, take a look at that, okay? So with that, uh, I'm anxious to see the numbers as I'm sure many of you are. So Lauren, I'm gonna turn it back to you and. Uh, Looking forward to looking at uh, what happened in the second quarter. Thank you, Frank. Okay, so um, we're gonna follow uh, uh, the agenda we've set out in the past. So I'll give you a macro environment update and we'll look at the uh, NADT trends, uh, top line and by product group, and we'll wrap with uh, enterprise infrastructure highlights. So for the macro environment, I wanna start with, these are survey results from our um, worldwide monthly tech investment monitor. We're doing future of enterprise resiliency surveys on a monthly basis. And I've pulled a couple of the economic outlook slides. Uh, this you know, seems, has been a kind of prevailing theme and of course sets the environment for the broader market. And um, I've highlighted here that this is uh, survey responses for the economy, economic outlook in 2023. And the biggest thing that you can see is uh, annual GDP expectations or that they'll be lower than previously projected. And that's across regions. Um, of course, the NADT data is focused just on North America, but we're in a global market. So I think this is really useful context that we're in a pessimistic mood. Uh, for the second half of this year uh, across regions. And you know we could talk about variations, but focusing on North America, I'll mostly skip that unless there's questions. For next year, um, the expectations are much more positive. So uh, again, across regions, we, we actually still have, if you look at the lower than expected uh, feedback, it's still fairly high, but overall much more positive for next year. And then that leads us to uh, IDC's GDP forecast. This is sourced from our worldwide black book and it's showing the trend over four years, again, by region, 
Um, but on the right hand side, you can see the US is actually among the lowest and trending down even into 2024, which kind of stands out. Um, on the far right, you've got the global total where uh, we've trended down into 2023, and then we get a slight tick up for 2024. Another big piece of the, the you know, macro environment is inflation. Um, here's a summary by region. The US is on the left this time, and it has been ticking down. Um, I assume most of you are watching the last uh, update for inflation was dropped from 4% to 3% overall in the US, which is a huge improvement from uh, the 9% range about a year ago. Uh, but of course, there's still some persistently high numbers in um, shelter or housing, uh, food and services. And so uh, we're looking at the Fed for more uh, inflation adjustments. Um, having said that, I think you know, having headline inflation down to 3% and declining is, is, uh, is not bad at all. So I, I, anyway, you, you get plenty of news about inflation and uh, related interest rates. So kind of summarizing that and applying it to the tech markets, um, we're seeing pretty solid returns for software and services that's been improving. Uh, the macro drivers of uh, enterprise investment, digital transformation, uh, continues. We have some price sensitivity, but um, it's it's mostly stable, and the way that it's being uh, covered by operating expenses also allows companies flexibility, and so we're seeing positive trends there. Um, in the hardware markets, uh, we have continued to see some weakness uh, below ex results below expectations, uh, particularly for consumer markets. That's been you know, bringing the outlook down and uh, we see a bit more uh, risk on the consumer side while infrastructure has been more stable. Um, it does have some risks, but, um, but again, more stable. Um, in broader terms, uh, economic wise, consumers are the weakest area. Uh, interest rate hikes are pressuring SMBs, so it's spreading out a, a little bit in the enterprise, but um, but really not seeing a lot of impact on the larger enterprise IT spending. Um, finally, just a couple numbers for the GDP and inflation that we just looked at. So uh, the US projection for this year is just 1.1% growth and uh, for next year, 0.6% growth. Uh, the 0.6 is actually up from pre previous expectations, and um, I'm sure you know that you know these uh, numbers constantly get revised, so they're they're not set in stone. Um, one of the points here is that actually quite a few economists still expect a U.S. recession, um, so that you know remains a risk that could uh, further damage spending and disrupt some plans. But with the with the macro projection still in positive territory, it doesn't look, um, certainly wouldn't expect it to be a large recession. And I think there's a, an active debate as to whether or not it will actually qualify as a re recession. And then finally, as I mentioned, inflation down to 3% in June. Okay, so let's transition into the NADT results. These are through week 27, so up through uh, July 9th, which is which is quite recent. Um, if we look at the uh, weekly trends, you've got uh, total revenue in the dark blue area. You can see the weekly variation is pretty substantial. Year-on-year -year growth in orange and the polynomial trend in the dashed orange, which uh, kind of shows the trend in an easier to consume way. So. Um, we hit a bottom on the trend in late April. It's turning up. We still have, you know, pretty substantial weekly variation. Week 26 that just passed was the sixth highest ever, um, just a couple five percent below the all-time peak from uh, September last year. So, um, you know, pretty pretty solid results overall, I would say. If we look at the rolling four-week view, which helps us kind of smooth out the trends, they look like this. The overall trend is uh, also turning up. If you look at timing, the maximum and minimums are about a week or two later than on the 
on the uh, straight weekly data just because of the way that the, the average of rolling works. And in the broader context, year-to-date revenue is down about 7%, uh, but it's still above all of the prior years uh, except for 2022. So, um, you know, I think coming off of a overall uh, post-COVID recovery and economic cycle, we had a lot of growth in IT in 2022. Uh, down 7% is not bad overall, and particularly when that trend is bottoming, we'll look at uh, you know, better growth going forward as the comparisons become easier. Um, with that in mind, the last bullet there, uh, the year to date was pulled down by double digit declines in the March to April timeframe. But if we look at just the past 10 weeks, uh, the average was only minus 2% decline year on year. So um, setting us up for stronger growth going forward. Um, as I've done in the past, I'm also looking at two-year average trends. This is a productive, a useful way to kind of see how, uh, you know, one the growth from one year is affected by the growth in the previous year, and it smooths out the trends. So um, just the straight two-year average on the left here, uh, we were below weeks for most of April and May, but just barely, a fraction, we had a minimum at 0.4% below. Um, and uh, in this case, because we're adding two years, when, when we see a positive number, in this case, it's actually just saying that the decline in 2023 is less than the gain was in 2022. So keep that in mind as you look at the trend. Um, if we look at the rolling average, it's very similar. We have um, about the same amount of periods below zero. We have a slightly lower minimum. Um, but again, we're um, turning up and, uh, you know, I think have a very positive outlook. Uh, splitting U.S. and Canada, uh, let me start with the chart on the left. Um, you can see the U.S. in orange and Canada in blue. Uh, one of the, this sort of jumps out at me immediately. The Canada number really looks like it's kind of falling off a cliff, but let's let me draw your attention to the scale. So that bottom is a little below, it's about 12% on the bottom. Um, the chart in the middle is uh, on a closer scale to the other charts that we've seen. And, and you can see the trend line there for the polynomial. So Canada has been much more stable. It is tipping down right now. Um, and you can see actually here in the next slide. So I'm building this out. I've added a couple of things, the two-year trend on the right and also the currency correlation on the left. So you may remember uh, last call, I pointed out that the Canada trend was very closely tied to a two-quarter lag on the currency exchange rate. And that is being displayed in the dashed blue line. You can see that it's turned down uh, lately and overall the trend uh, correlates pretty well with the Canada trend. And then, um, on the far right, you can also see that both of the blue lines, the solid and the dashed, are turning up. So, you know, I think there's a, a large influence here from the current, the exchange rate. There's also a large influence from Fed actions on uh, interest rates and, uh, you know, outlook for, for the economy generally. And as we get into uh, start to get inflation under control, less uh, Fed actions and so on, I would expect that um, that the, the Canada numbers are going to turn up. They'll have easier comparisons and a more stable economic environment. Um, by product group, so we're looking at um, the, the major product groups within the NADT. I've put the consumer product categories in dashed lines. So we've got uh, AV and consumer electronics in the uh, blue line um, and personal computing in the yellow line. Uh, those are the ones that are declining. We actually have also in gray, we have others, which includes things like um, batteries and cables. So, and are closely related to device sales. So those categories have been trending down. On the other hand, we have more enterprise-oriented categories, um, infrastructure, hardware, services, and software, all of which have stayed positive and are turning up. So, um, 
So, you know, pretty clear difference between the categories. Um, the, the yellow and blue consumer lines declining is, is perhaps a bit concerning, uh, or well, not concerning, but is, uh, attracts attention for sure about the declines. But overall, I think fairly solid. Um, let me talk about the PC line. So I point out here that um, it, it uh, hit a low in week 19, which is mid-May, but has recently turned up. Um, the, uh, that said, the most recent five weeks were averaging minus 25% year on year versus minus 16% for the prior five weeks. So, you know, there, we continue to see some weakness in uh, devices and PCs in particular. Um, I'll talk about that a bit more as we get into the PC specific uh, slides. If we look at this on a two year trend, um, of course, you've got the same categories. The numbers are much more positive. Uh, both PC and AV are uh, turning up. Um, and uh, on the other hand, if you look at uh, the enterprise categories, they're not turning down dramatically, but we are seeing them at or past peak. So, you know, we'll expect those to continue as uh, areas of growth, but probably not accelerating growth. Pardon me. Okay, so let's look at software in a little more detail. On the left, we have the, uh, the revenue charted as a line. So this is um, hopefully helpful in seeing the, the uh, relative volume that's associated with each of, the, each of the categories. And you can also see the seasonality here. So you know, just looking at that top red line, you can pretty easily see smaller bumps for Q1, 2, and 3, and then a larger bump in Q4 for each of the years. So right now we're in that, basically in that second bump for the Q2 cycle. Um, that I think is gonna be particularly helpful when we get to the PC slide at the end. So just keep that in mind, we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, overall software spending is trending up. We hit a, a low in uh, early March. Uh, the largest category system infrastructure software in the blue dashed line. Um, has recovered with uh, led by network spending, but there are six or so categories uh, within uh, system infrastructure software and they're all turning up. So um, fairly robust trend there. Um, the next large category is uh, platform software, AD&D &D represented in yellow, that also accelerated across categories. Um, Although it's interesting that app development grew, applications themselves slowed down, um, particularly uh, a slowdown in engineering apps. So maybe that's associated with slower workstation sales or um, shifting into more um, you know, AI or development type software as opposed to the engineering apps, but there are different dynamics within these categories. Um, this is still software, so I just did a build on the uh, middle chart and added the two-year trends here. Uh, you can see that um, apps in gray is still uh, slowing down, but uh, at, a, at a slower pace and also coming off of a peak at the end of 2022. Uh, the yellow line, uh, app deployment and development, is now turning positive after a couple years below zero. So. Um, you know, nice recovery there. Overall positive growth, you can see a little bit of slowdown in the blue uh, system infrastructure line, which is the largest category, and the grand total in red, um, but, but, you know, still solid growth. Okay, for services, uh, you know, again, we have the, the uh, straight revenue night lines on the left. It's a, the seasonality is a little bit less regular, less pronounced, um, but we're also seeing overall services revenue turn up. Uh, see it most clearly in the red line in the middle chart uh, turning up recently. Extended services agreements in orange uh, is the largest category that's being broken out. Um, that passed a bottom of the mark, a growth bottom in April. Uh, phone consulting in yellow has also turned up more recently. 
Other services is actually the largest category. If you look on the left chart, uh, you'll see it just below the grand total uh, is um, much more positive. So that's the dashed line in the middle. Um, you know, the trend line is, is uh, touching above 40% right now. So quite a lot of uh, growth, although that's uh, kind of a diverse category in there. And then warranties and solid blue is, um, is you know, declining after a, a lot of growth. It's come down pretty fast. It's a small amount of spending um, and related to devices, but, uh, but all, you know, definitely worth keeping an eye on. If we build that out and we look at the two-year trends, you can see that warranties and that solid blue line looks a lot better. Um, hitting a bottom and still at near 10% uh, uh, rate recently after coming down from a 30% in middle of last year. Um, overall spending is in red, is also just below 10%. And that uh, larger others category with the dashed blue line is actually still accelerating and above 20%. So pretty solid overall services results. All right, let's jump into PCs. And here, I wanna focus first on the uh, left-hand chart. You can see the total revenue through NADT members uh, represented here. We hit a low in early January, which is pretty pronounced, but we've, um, you know, we've seen that revenue increase fairly consistently since then. So I think that is, it's a, it's a great point in and of itself. It's a helpful reference when we look at the middle chart. If you look at the notebook line, which is dashed blue, uh, we, it starts at almost 40% top left. That was you know clearly driven by a lot of pandemic investment, uh, but it's almost a straight decline all the way through the end of the, the right-hand side of that chart um, on a yearly basis. So that, that would, you know, if, if you didn't put that in context, you, you might think, okay, well, notebooks is just going through the, going through the ground. Uh, so that's why I really want to point out the leftmost chart where you can see that, in fact, actual revenue hit a bottom in uh, January, and we've recovered since then. On a growth basis, you'll also see in the two-year trend that it looks a lot better. Um, so that dashed blue line is pulling down the grand total in red. Uh, we do have a downward trend on tablets, which is another you know, major part of this. It's, it's a pretty similar situation in notebooks. Um, the other categories, uh, desktop workstations and others, um, you know, all had nice peaks in late 2021 into 2022, but they've passed their bottom on this trend. Um, so finally, um, as, as you probably know, Apple has shifted their strategy away from distribution. So this is kind of an extra weight on uh, distribution revenue in the short term as, you know, the, that revenue is kind of hopefully replaced by other products, uh, but that's an important difference from uh, actual consumption in the overall PC market. So building this out for the two-year trend, um, in this view, you can see that uh, notebooks has also turned up and the, the grand total with it. Um, they're just getting into uh, net zero revenue, but they'll have easier comparisons going forward. So we should expect some more growth in the second half of the year. Uh, tablets in yellow is still below zero and hasn't really noticeably turned up. But I, you know, the, if you look at the slope of that line, I would say it's pretty close to the bottom. So overall, there's, um, you know, definitely been some headwinds. We we're coming off of a tough comparison in 2022. Um, but we also actually see a lot of economic stability, a lot of continuing investment on the enterprise side, which Lady Say is going to talk about. And even on the devices side, we're seeing that uh, in essentially all cases, we've passed the bottom and things are starting to look up. So um, anyway, hopefully useful, uh, useful updates. Let me pass it to Lady Say to give us some insight on uh, enterprise trends. Thank you, Lauren. As Lauren mentioned, if um, 
you think about the context or the background for the enterprise, uh, the enterprise infrastructure market overall. So we saw for the past three years how the demand for enterprise infrastructure overall has remained pretty, pretty stable despite um, the pandemic and the economic conditions deteriorating globally. Um, we see that the prospects remain slightly positive. There's going to be slowdown that we expect for the year 2023. But so far, the past three years have been really positive for the enterprise infrastructure uh, market. What we saw was that the pandemic rather, yes, despite the restrictions that it created, it also created opportunities in several industries saw the need of going through a necessary digital transformation process. Um, there was some product availability that was kind of like uh, inflating prices, especially during 2021. But even with that, um, companies were very aware that they needed to support a different kind of activities, provide services, uh, modernize their infrastructure in many cases to be able to keep up with the demands in the different environment that was created due to the pandemic. Um, it was important because um, data centers realized of the need of not only being scalable, but at the same time being energy efficient, try to work on their cost efficiency. How do you deploy things better so you're able to scale at a faster pace? And this not only was true for the largest hyperscalers and cloud service providers of the world, it also became very important for the traditional industries that rely heavily in um, infrastructure. We're talking about finance, manufacturing, um, in many cases, transportation as well. So we, we saw that these dynamics were the main fuel um, for the continuous growth on the enterprise side. And at the same time, we pair this up with uh, more activity happening online, more data being created online, uh, support for remote workers that was also pretty important, and then security taking certain center stage in these dynamics. Um, all data centers very concerned about um, cyber attacks and real reliability of their information and their data now that their environment had become distributed rather than centralized. What we see is that the future investments, in, we probably have entered a new phase in the enterprise infrastructure market where the supply chain has been mostly resolved, but we are now entering a, a time where we have new technologies being announced uh, on the server side. And the um, the pressure on energy consumption and cost reduction, especially in different regions of the world, it's just at the center of um, the top of mind when customers decide where to acquire and how to acquire and deploy their infrastructure. So we're seeing more and more uh, decisions being driven by workloads, critical workloads, as um, trying to allocate budgets when it comes to investment priorities. And the other thing that is important is that the type of workloads that we see uh, driving these um, new initiatives for new deployments, for new technology, for uh, infrastructure, and how it is deployed and consumed in the data center are mainly centered around three or four topics. We hear a lot about AI and machine learning. We hear a lot about edge and cloud disaster recovery, and definitely security continues to be top of mind. One of the trends that we are also seeing as emerging trends in this market are how many companies are making decisions not only based on their workloads, but also in what's the most cost-effective deployment model or acquisition model for their infrastructure. So we're starting to see interest in hardware as a service offerings, and um, that, one, that one also affecting how consumers are acquiring and using infrastructure. So what is positive is that if we talk to consumers or end users about what are their expectations in terms of budget for this year, for 2023, most of them are uh, positive in their, uh, in their view that their spending will be either the same as they had originally planned, um, or it will be a little bit higher. And especially in North America, if you see only 
24% of, of the respondents said that they will expect to be working with lower budgets. So this always continues to be, um, there's a positive environment because the needs continue to increase. And in order to stay competitive, companies need to sustain their investment levels. One of the important things is that despite thinking about my budget will be similar to, to what I expected, or in some cases, a little bit higher, there are still things that are concerning or top of mind for the decision makers when it comes to infrastructure. Uh, pricing is one of them. If inflation continues driving prices up, it's usually something that is passed down to the consumers, and that's one of their top of mind. And definitely, if the recession um, realizes itself during this year, they that might affect the sentiment or that might affect the budgets uh, in reality for the proposed investments for, for the year. So that's something that we need to keep an eye on. One of the good news when it comes to spending and budgets is that whenever you ask end users on what are the areas that they believe that if they have to sacrifice something when it comes to their budget, what are the categories that are more resilient or most immune to these budget cuts? They usually refer to security, risk compliance, that's top of mind. But the second category is maintaining their infrastructure for the regular operations and optimization. So that's where, and that's one, one of the reasons since we started running these surveys, these two have continued to be top of mind. And it's reflected on how we've seen the enterprise infrastructure, including security, evolving for the past three years, because these are two priorities when it comes to investment. And if there's reductions in budgets, they are usually the least affected categories overall. So I'm gonna give you a, a perspective of how the market has been evolving for the past four years. In the vertical axis in all the charts represents annual growth. And the horizontal axis represent the share of spending for that technology overall when we talk about all of the enterprise infrastructure technologies. And you can see on the yellow box for each year how much spending and what's the growth compared to the previous year. For the year 2019, we were coming from a huge refreshment cycle that had been uh, led by not only traditional enterprises, but also cloud service providers and hyperscalers. So 2019 was a, was a year that the market kind of like normalized itself. The spending remained relatively flat compared to the previous year. The only technology that by 2019 started picking up was HCI appliances, even though it's still, you know, less than 5% of the total spending when it comes to enterprise infrastructure. But all the ends and servers, which are usually the largest categories were pretty stable. Networking was the only category that year that was um, increasing. And usually the result is you replace infrastructure and then you work on your networking adjustments as needed. So it's it was normal. By 2020, we were full on on pandemic mode and uh, we were starting to see um, product uh, and supply chain disruptions. And even with that, the, the spending needs were high. And one of the first areas in this market that's starting spending more to fulfill their obligations on delivering services that are based on infrastructure were mainly the hyperscalers and the cloud service providers. If you remember, 2020 was a year where everybody went to work from home, streaming services and content or the, what we call digital services, which are you know the content-based uh, services like Twitter, Facebook, Netflix, YouTube, they were exploding. And most of these activities are fulfilled by the type of systems that are provided by ODMs, which are basically these original design manufacturers based out of Taiwan that have direct dealings with the major uh, data centers in the world. So as you see, they were growing above 20%. They were the driver for spending mainly in the server market, but still the name server and storage vendors were able to remain relatively stable by year 2020. If you think about how it evolved in year 2021, what we started seeing was despite the supply chain, uh, uh, chain, chain um, restrictions, we started seeing increased spending. Whatever product was available, um, 
granted, this this year has pressure on prices because uh, component availability was still an issue. But if you see all of the technologies in the market are moving within the close to 10% growth, which wasn't the case the year prior. Um, we see HC Appliance is still very close to double high double digit growth. The solution was starting to be seen as an alternative to uh, a very, a very robust solution for when you needed a more specialized type of server to run mission critical applications and, um, and cost effective when it comes to doing some of the storage related or addressing some of the storage related workloads. By year 2022, we saw most of the supply chain issues being resolved. Many of the vendors were still carrying a, a, a good amount of backlog that we, we even see them clearing during 2023, but the market benefited from this new product availability, vendors being able to clear their backlog, trying to normalize their run rate. But if you see also this year started being fueled by um, all of the supercomputers and many of the deployments in the world that were related to AI in general and machine learning. So 2022 is the year where we definitely started seeing a shift in the market. We, in the previous years, most of the infrastructure was the response of the new environment for distributed work, uh, a lot of data and content being produced, uh, companies trying to make more efficient, uh, increase efficiencies in their operation. While in 2022, um, what happened was that all of the infrastructure that was needed to start supporting new workloads like text and media analytics or AI and machine learning were driving the market. And you see that in the reflection of the server market and ODMs growing 20%, which you know it's something that we hadn't seen uh, before. So we are far past the pre-pandemic levels. Uh, spending looks very healthy. In, we continue seeing server and uh, and switching in general being being the main technologies taking advantage of this growth. And even though the inflation pricing is not necessarily the main driver, what we're seeing is configurations for the traditional servers and even for storage are beginning to change. We're seeing uh, users trying to build more robust configurations, which are which is putting pressure on ASPs and increasing ASPs because the workloads that they are addressing are a little bit more complex. We're still seeing a market that it's mainly driven when it comes in terms of spending, as you saw from the previous slides, from the server market. So if we think about preferred form factors by the, the end users acquiring infrastructure, we're still seeing uh, wrap servers in the form of either standard servers, those that are branded by a uh, traditional OEM like Dell, HPE, IBM, uh, Inspur, and custom rack servers. And if you see that category of custom rack servers has been growing in spending, that's the category that it's highly associated with ODMs selling directly to these big hyperscalers in the world. The transformation that these hyperscalers are going through today in, with all the infrastructure that needs to be deployed around um, to be able to enable generative AI or machine learning or AI application development is driving richer configurations and it's driving also maybe not higher volumes, but much denser servers. And that it's true, not only for ODMs, we see the similar dynamic happening for OEM suppliers. Um, ASPs overall have been pulling up just because the configurations are now based on the decision of, I need to address some sort of uh, new services and new workloads. And um, probably I buy less servers in terms of units, but I buy them with a configuration that it's a richer configuration. So if you see ASPs are in uh, 2022, uh, increase for all the form factors in the market, but the highest one was basically 
uh, standard rats. Um, blades, in a way, were coming from uh, low years in the past. And then for, for those supply chain and, and component availability was the main point of pressure. For rack and, and standard servers and custom rack, we saw definitely richer configurations. So how do we see the next two years when it comes to these markets? As you see, we're seeing that there's a slowdown. We're coming from almost 20% or over 16% uh, growth uh, for 2022 for the entire enterprise infrastructure uh, spectrum. And we believe that 2023, just because of um, the restrictions that we're seeing in terms of people being more cautious, et cetera, the budgets will remain relatively flat. And we believe that the spending, even though it won't decline, it will slow down to be pretty similar to the level of spending that we saw during 2022. If you see basically for the main categories in the market, most of the spending in 2023 is slightly lower than the previous year, with the exception of those that did pretty well. So standard servers, we're seeing a slight decline, probably minus 2%. And um, a, for ODMs, rather than growing you know, over 20%, we believe the growth is probably half of what it was last year. And we'll see uh, how the uh, average selling prices continue to, to perform in all of these technologies, but definitely the new workloads will be driving those price increases if they exist. If we talk about, um, as you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that most of the decisions that we're seeing when it comes to how do I acquire, deploy, and select my new infrastructure are related to workloads. And if you compare decisions on server workloads and storage workloads, in some cases, uh, both of them are still very concentrated on data management and business applications, because those are the traditional workloads that both servers and storage uh, companies need to run these to continue their operation, to fulfill their regular needs overall. But if you see AI lifecycle in the digital services, which is basically content creation, are the two workloads that if you compare them for the next uh, two years, they will be increasing while most of the others will probably decline a little bit during 2023 and then have a slight, slight recovery in 2024. We hear a lot of buzz around AI and digital services. And then one of those main components is the vendor's ability on the infrastructure side mainly to be able to provide any service that allows a company to build a, either applications for AI or their own language when it comes to developing a secure environment and making sure that the data is protected and it's not in the open, that they can do this securely and still take advantage of these new technologies and apply them to their business. So where are companies when it comes to AI? In what you see here is the, the light color is the same question we asked to these companies back in February. And if you see for North America, 54% of the respondents say, we're not doing anything. And now that we have results for June, this sentiment changed dramatically. If you see only 21% of the companies say, we're not doing anything, and then Almost 40%, 38% are saying, yes, we are investing in generative AI. We will be working on this for 2023. And most of the companies are saying, we're exploring. We, we still want to see what the, what the attack plan will be. But just this shift in sentiment between the run of surveys that we run for the February cycle compared to June is significant because North American companies were went from saying we're not doing really anything to saying we're actively working on this and this is our focus for 2023. So when it comes to how we see this market evolving, especially we're focusing on servers. That's the technology where um, the acceleration and the new things we see evolving and happening. 
And this is particularly important because we track um, two phases of, the, of this market. We track how many GPUs are available or accelerators in general, ASICs or FPGAs, are available in the market uh, overall. So the semiconductor team has a tracking for all of these components uh, over time and how their shipments have been in increasing. A portion of those available GPUs in the market makes its way to the server market, where these uh, um, components or these accelerators are embedded in servers and then make its way into the market. The figures that you're seeing here may seem probably low for you because today we, we are seeing that close to 10% of the new servers that are shipping in a year are being shipped with, a, with an accelerator. And the reality is that the way we're tracking this is we're only counting as accelerated servers, those that leave the factory from the manufacturer with an accelerator embedded. We have realized that most of the activity for accelerated servers is happening in the channel. We see there's a huge opportunity because the servers are then, um, ship to the channel partners, and the channels are getting also the components from the different companies that, that manufacture these. Lauren, we lost the screen. I don't know what oh, happened. So sorry. And many of these configurations are happening on, in what IDC calls aftermarket. You, as a channel partner, receive a server on a typical configuration and based on the needs of your clients or their requests, you will be adding many times more memory uh, or adding CPUs or adding GPUs. So we believe as um, the trend continues, yes, we will see certain configurations leaving the factory with the accelerators embedded in them. This is mainly driven by ODMs. ODMs always deliver their configurations already built, we, we count you know, the level of assembly as uh, almost a finalized product, and we know how many are going with embedded GPUs. But, uh, but basically, these, these are the, the trends where we leave. There's a channel play that it's going to start uh, fueling this growth in the channel for the upcoming, for the upcoming quarters. OK. So just to keep in mind, what are the areas where uh, companies are investing when it comes to AI? Can, can we move on prior, uh, Lauren? Yeah. Um, even though generative AI, it's the topic that is most talked about. If you look for North America, most of the investment in, is coming at this point in time or the, or the allocation of their budget in large data sets, analytics, digital uh, um, and detect changes in their data. So companies start looking at the back end, not necessarily uh, interpreting AI or generative AI. So that's also something to keep in mind. It's still a very back end, uh, a play for the back end. And lastly, one of the important things uh, to consider is that um, clients in general continue relying on their primary infrastructure provider for recommendations and infrastructure. Digital infrastructure provider includes, you know, branded vendors and their par channel partners. So that positioning is still in interesting. And some companies also think about their public cloud provider as one of the, as one of the primary uh, sources of uh, infrastructure when it comes to making decisions for their investments. So overall, what we see is um, channel partners and direct vendors or cloud service providers are what is considered through a, the market as the most strategic technology partners, either to deploy infrastructure, acquire infrastructure, either directly or in as a service model. We believe HDI will continue uh, growing in, and configurations in the x86 market are going to tend to be higher end, more robust, and better accelerators is an opportunity just because we are starting to address new workloads. Um, we, we still see that there's a large CPU inventory, and we believe that's probably one of the reasons we see the server market not growing as a, at a faster pace, because 
we're still trying to, vendors are still trying to deal on trying to clear the, their backlog, clear the inventory that they have, and there's announcements of new processors this year. So we believe that the refresh of the new platform starts in the second half of 2023, but will spread into 2024. There's opportunity there. In most of the cases, these new processors are you know, positioned as pair these with GPUs and you know, we, we, we expect to see configurations to continue to be robust. Um, edge, cloud, machine learning, AI, key uh, factors that you need to be able to discuss with your clients, uh, it, generating opportunities for larger configurations, many of the deployments being configured in the channel rather than being developed and deployed directly from the factory. And switch is still being an essential part of the infrastructure because bandwidth and scalability and connectivity continues to be one of the main players when it comes to these uh, complex workloads. The same happens to be true for security. Security, it's overall ranked at the top because organizations see cyber attacks and security as one of the most important areas for investments. And as you see, uh, we still have very positive prospects. We believe in enterprise infrastructure spending will continue to be relatively immune to budget cuts and um, to economic conditions. Thank you, Lady Say. Um, really in depth, covered a lot of ground there. Um, thank you also to our attendees. I, I think we're a little bit over, but hopefully we gave you some good value there. Um, as we close, I do see there was a question about inventory, uh, channel inventories. Lady Say spoke about a, a bit about that on the enterprise side. On the consumer side, particularly PCs, um, uh, you know, we went through a phase later in uh, 2020, 2022, earlier in this year, where a lot of the big players were trying to clear out inventory, and that's contributed to the faster uh, decline in shipments. My understanding is that we're uh, not all the way out of that, but that we've made a good uh, dent in rationalizing the inventory. Um, I think most of the supply issues, you know, logistical issues, COVID delays, and that stuff is behind us. Um, although there's been some concern, I think more concern out of Asia actually about uh, the potential impact of a recession and how that might impact um, the flow of goods. So I, I guess I'd summarize it as uh, we're not completely done with it, but we've made a lot of progress in the last couple months and quarters. And I think as we get into the back half of the year with rising seasonality and um, I would argue more stable economic outlook that uh, that you know that that should pass so it should, that should be resolved. Thank you everybody for participating and we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in future uh, chats. No, that's great, Lauren. Uh, thank you. And uh, that was uh, great information. And we'll keep doing these uh, every quarter. So looking forward to uh, third quarter update when the, when the time comes. Thanks again. Thank you.